This is the 232nd episode of Club Folks Weekly for the last week of October 2015. This episode is titled Slacking Off. Cloud Focus Weekly is brought to you by Arcus, specializing in Salesforce implementation, consulting, and force.com development, which I don't even think it exists anymore. Search for Arcus on the App Exchange and read what our clients have to say about us. I'm your host, I do exist anymore, Jason Atwood, and joining me, the co host who does not exist anymore, Justin Elsie. Justin, how are you doing? Now you're not going to talk? I don't exist. Oh, wow. Apparently. Uh, wow. Where did that come from? What? I don't exist. I said, because I said force.com development doesn't exist anymore. Oh, that's awful. Who it's, wrote that? Some marketer. Who the? We got to fire the marketing team. I think that's you. You got to at mention the marketing team. That's you. Tell them to they're fired. Um, all right. Well, we What have... do we call it now? It's consulting and, and app cloud development. Yeah. App cloud. App cloud. Because it's the app cloud. It's where all the apps live. Why not? In the clouds. You cannot pick this pick, by the way. I just, no. No, that's the pick. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> it that is, is actually that very is, apropos. That is terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm, spring 12, pretty bad. This one's worse. Nope, not at all. It's yeah. a great pick. It's a perfect pick. All right, it goes then along I, with this. You know what? Then I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you, yeah, good <laughs> Proper that choice. Terrible. All Proper right. choice. So let's um. So we have a special. This is why you listen to this podcast for the banter. We should just do. We should do an all banter episode. I think we just started. Yeah. No, we need to do an episode. Where we don't actually talk about anything. We just we're banter. doing that right now. Kind of like listening to us when we're not podcasting. We could do. We could keep going. I mean, the Hand title puppets. you already said was slacking off. We could just start slacking off and just banter. But I we think actually we've done it already though at Dreamforce. We One of those ban- Dreamforce. Oh, yeah. I think but that was terrible. I think Dreamforce Day 2 was a pretty We also need brutal. a drinking podcast where we just sit and drink. Mm, I don't know if our sponsor would four, appreciate that. Four Finger, four finger Justin and Vodka Tonic Jake. I don't think, I don't <laughs> think our sponsor <laughs> would appreciate the all-drinking podcast. Well, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, we're a majority voter <laughs> sponsor. So we I can think bo- we might need approval. We might need approval from the higher ups. Uh, approved. Excellent. Um, you're right. Too many things could slip by the the, the profanity filter. Well, that's if the we, thing. This is not an explicit. We podcast. could do an explicit version. I mean, we've been known to try from time and time to time again. Explicit. Versions. As long as we don't publish the other podcast on top of this podcast, as long as that doesn't happen, we're all good. <laughs> We've been all right, known to do these things. Let's so. get to Jen. Mostly you. Let's get to our agenda. Yes. Um. So we decided, uh, aka me, uh, decided last week that uh, we have been using a tool that's kind of getting a lot, a lot of hype, and I thought. We've been getting questions about it. I get questions about it whenever I talk about it. So I thought, why don't we just make this into one of our special episodes and talk about Slack. Um, So we're going to just kind of deep dive in. We're going to talk about Slack. We're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about how we got there. We're going to talk about the pros. We're going to talk about the cons. We're going to have to keep one of our employees out who just wants to sit there and tell us how great it is. We're going to have to do all of that. So this is not a Salesforce podcast. If you are looking for Salesforce content, Thank you for downloading and listening to the, to the first uh, three minutes and 25 seconds, and you can stop it because we're going to talk about Slack, okay? Um, so first, why don't you mm-hmm. tell me what Slack is? So it's really hard to explain, oh, I geez, think. You're, the, you're but, the best. Well, You're not the best in the business for a reason. It's kind of hard to explain what Slack is because it's kind of a lot of things to a lot of people, Yeah, but it's... Is it's it a cure a, for cancer? No. Okay. So at its core, it's a communications platform. Good. And it allows for a lot of different types of communications. It allows for one-to-one private communications. It allows for uh, group private communications. It allows for group public communications. Uh, I think back in the day, we used to call this persistent chat. Yes. So it allows for all of those types of communications within and collaborations within a company or within a team. So you can actually create different teams uh, outside of a company do, or do even within for the you. company. Yeah. Do you think that people started when they built Slack, they were thinking more WhatsApp killer? No. And like they landed in like corporate? No. Because it, it, 
because it, it wouldn't it wouldn't really work as a whatsapp killer because whatsapp you can kind of send a whatsapp to anybody whose phone number you have okay in this case you would need to create a team and then have the person join the team and then okay now i've got one okay. person on the team now let me get another person in there a little weird right so like my sister uses slack at at her workplace and, right you know we've we jokingly said, oh, let's set up the Edelstein team. And like, because you can sort of toggle between teams inside the app. Right. And so we you can could just cross teams. Chat. Yeah. Right. We can just chat during the day, but we've never done it because we have iMessage for that. Yeah. I, I, iMessage? Yeah. You have iMessage? Yeah. Oh, iMessage. I, sorry. I thought you. Were... What? What? Yeah. I thought you were saying iMessage. I am. And I was like, I like, am like you know AOL, the thing on your iPhone. Yes, I don't think they call it iMessage. I think it's called Messages anymore. But whatever. Anyway. Okay, um, I think it's so, still called an iMessage. I, I think I like to start off when I talk to people about Slack is first saying it's chat, like because I think as a very if you just think about the basics, like because if you're trying to explain something to someone, you don't want to be like, well, it's a communication platform that leverages. Uh, no, it's like first off, it's just chat. You can send things to people, and they can send things back. And, you know, and it's real time. So if you think about, right, the difference between chat and something like chatter, chatter isn't real time because chatter is you post and then there's a response and post response. This is real time. You see other people typing. You, you know, it is like a real time chat. Now it has then different types of chats, what I would say. There's channel chats, there's groups, there's direct messages. So there's kind of like all these different types. They just change stuff too. I yeah, think I, I think created the, groups. No, I think the groups just got turned into private channels. Okay. Well, let's let's stick to the let's stick to the to the. Well, you're the one who's jumping in there. Well, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to explain what it is. So if you had no idea, didn't now, I do that? No, I didn't, didn't do a very good job. It's a pay product. I mean, a free. It's a freemium version, so you get Zippo, and then you get something. You know, well, just you like, get more than Zippo for free. You get quite a bit for free. Well, I'm saying it's not a. It's it's not a full free. It's a one of these. Hey, you start with a little, and then you can kind of go up the ladder of pricing. So, just from a you know high level, there is a free for small teams, unlimited evaluation. Then you can go standard for six sixty seven a month. Um, plus for twelve fifty, and then there's something called Enterprise that hasn't even come out yet. Um, I think there's a couple reasons it's getting so much hype, um, or that I've been reading about all the hype about it for the last oh, six months, nine months. One is a lot around the is it is it an email killer, right? Does it kill email? Um, if you watch the video, there's a good video, or you know they did a promotional thing that you know says how they went to this organization. Um, they def there's definitely kind of a slant towards this is supposed to be take taking over email, meaning let's, let's get away from e email and let's just do Slack. Um, and I would say that's the, it's, it's a nice theory. I don't know if it's, it's anywhere true because it's, it's not external. But my first thought is it's not, I can't Slack with everybody unless everybody's on Slack, but we know everybody's on email, which is why it's so universally nice because everybody has email. Whereas Slack, I couldn't say to my client, hey, let's collaborate on Slack. They'd be like, what? And then they have to go through all the problems of with it. So it, the first thing I think of is it's more organizational based than just email. Email is everything. So this is more organizational based or group based or whatever. It's more for a group of people who are deciding to use the tool together and are deciding on, you know, are making that decision versus email, which is not that way. Um, yes? No? Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing as when Salesforce tried to call Chatter an email killer. Right. Which all chatter does is send you more email but <laughs> but that that whole thing of like the intern who was going to go email lists oh that was for a, a month discussion. or for a summer and it's like well if you never need to talk to anybody except for people who work with you right go ahead well it's it's it for for now oh, great there is a free version but it's kind of one of those things it's a little bit of a walled garden you kind of have to have you have to have slack whereas in most you know, everybody has email, if not 17 emails. So th you can just communicate with them. Also, there's many, many, many different ways to get to email. There's thousands, of, there's clients, there's web, there's something. Slack is a walled garden. It's one thing. It's not an open standard. It's a closed environment. To be very clear, I mean, the free version is full but, on. And but you, you understand, get, you get email isn't something that a company runs. 
Like mm-hmm. nobody, you don't go and buy email. You have a thousand providers of email. Slack, there's only one provider of Slack in the world. No, we're not. I'm, I'm not like arguing with you. Okay. I'm just but saying that's that what, the, that's a difference, right? It, sure. But you you keep kind of going back to this like free. You get a little. You you kind of get a decent amount with free, and you could use the free version for eternity. Well, as long as the company survives. Sure, right. but you don't have to pay for this thing. Right. Um. So, and then I think there's there's sort of so that's what I generally start by saying. I say is first it's it's a kind of an I am client. If you think about WhatsApp, if you think about AOL, I have some messenger, you think about that, you think about Hangouts, not the video side of Hangouts, but the sort of like, hey, I can have a Hangout, I can have a group, I can talk to people. Okay, it's sort of that. You chat, you talk, you communicate back and forth. And it, and I think what what's kind of the hardest thing about Slack is it does a bunch of stuff on the start, and then it does more and more and more, and it adds on as many layers to all this stuff. So it's, it, is, it is chat, one-on-one chat, but it also has... A lot of nice features to it that makes it you know i think we we came we can talk a little bit about our story but we came from hangouts where we were using as an as an organization to communicate via real-time chat if i wanted to chat with you now you and i have 1500 ways of chatting together but you know typically we'd say oh, okay are you on hangouts and we'd use google hangouts because we have google apps and so it felt good um, but we decided to sort of move off of Google Hangouts, A, because I feel like the platform never evolved. It just sort of stuck to where it was. It never got any better. Um, it wasn't easy to sort of do anything else other than go, hey, <laughs> you know, and then you could write like four or five things, and then that was really it. Whereas I think Slack was nice about Slack because it kind of creates these other things, and we'll talk about some of them. So first thing is sort of channels. So why don't you describe what a channel is? Sure. So a channel is – a conversation around a topic. So you can think of a topic as a project. You could think of a topic as a, a organizational mission that, that you have within your organization that you rally around. Um, basically anything that one or more people, basically I would say maybe two or more people would ever like want to talk about and maybe ask a question of somebody within uh, a channel can be used for that. A channel can also be used um, for integration purposes. So as an example, we have a couple of integrations in our Slack universe that Ooh, let's, can we publish just, things into right. channels. Well, right. you asked me what channels are used for. Well, channels are used for this. So you can set up a channel to send data from external sources into a channel and you can be you can join the channel and sort of be looking at it or you can leave it and it's sort of not there within your view but it's it's kind of up to the individual user if they would like to join or not join a particular channel if it's a topic that they're interested or not interested in you can at the entire channel which sort of notifies everybody like hey there's a thing going on in here or you can just post things in there and people will pick them up and see them and answer them appropriately yeah so i'll give off a couple of ours our ones we have one called general which is great but you know sort of everybody and everybody in the channel um we have one called slack tips okay so that's where you would post slack tips uh we have one called whiteboards which is where if we ever do any fun whiteboarding we then take a picture of it and post it to the whiteboard uh social which you mentioned which is it's a feed so there's feeds that come into it so every time Arcus posts like the Twitter Arcus and there's others. There's a bunch, bunch of blogs that right. we throw in there that we follow. So it's kind of like we creating had your one own for news Dream, feed. We had one for Dreamforce. So we had a Dreamforce so, 15 so channel. So I was going to talk about that because that was a that was a unique use case for this, which is we wanted to create a collaboration communication channel while we were all at this event. Right. So a way to communicate while we're in all disparate places. Yeah. And to kind of have just us. Now we could have created a WhatsApp. We didn't want to do a WhatsApp group. We, did we that didn't want to do two years a, ago. a like what is it? The um work walk me, work me, whatever that oh that yeah we don't is. use that we don't one. Let, whatever that one's called. We didn't want to do that. Right. And and it need to be it need to be more real time than sort of a chatter group, right? Because a chatter group well it's kind of like a channel. It's a group of people who are paying attention. You can either have private or public ones. It's not, again, the, the real-time collaboration isn't there, 
right? You can't kind of just instantly be posting into it and quickly getting, and its notification is to send you something that you're trying to stay, stay away from anyway. Like I need, if every time I posted into Slack, it sent me an email, <laughs> I'd be like, well, this is, you know, you're not helping me here, right? You right. need to go to the thing to get. And you data. have the granular ability to say, I want notifications on this channel. Right. I don't want notifications on any of these others. I'll browse them when I feel like it. And that, so there's two huge sort of, well, I'll get to some of the awesome features. Um, there's two huge awesome features there. One is per channel notification. So for DF15, I turned on that as full alerts on every device. That's another huge Slack pus. Um, meaning anytime someone posted in there, I got alerted because I wanted to use it like I am, like message, like messages or text. I want it to be a fully alerting thing. So I got, so if anybody asked a question or whatever, need to meet up, I could go in there and that works great. And so being able to do that per channel is, is pretty good. Um, you can also do that per device. So you can have your desktop version, um, to give you certain notifications, but then my, you know, my iOS version, give me different notifications. Mm -hmm. Again, very powerful because that's granular on a level that for notifications, which I think are terrible, you know, you, you know, to be able to kind of control, well, you know, actually when I'm out on the road, I do want to have a notification on my phone because it's important that when someone mentions me, um, so that's the channels. And again, they could be kind of just collectives and you can have private ones or, or public ones, correct? This just changed, but now channels have kind of swallowed groups. So now you can have private channels and public channels. They used to be like groups and channels and groups were private and channels were by default public. Now they're all channels and they're either private or public. Okay. Um, because groups are a different thing. Groups are nothing. No, groups now contain channels. Oh, oh, that's you, you're, you, you've been I'm left behind, behind on yeah, that one. You've been left behind. Like as of like two days ago, yes. this all flipped on me, and I was like, "What just so happened?" Groups now, you set up a group, and when you add someone to a group, they they then automatically follow all the channels that are associated to that group. Oh wow! Yeah, interesting. That just happened. That just that happened in your happen. face. Um, did. So 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 well, I was talking about why we moved. Well, we left because of Hangouts was just kind of not getting it done. Slack was getting a lot of rave. We actually piloted it. We piloted it twice. The small dev team decided to sort of go for it and try it, and they were really enjoying it. And there's some nice dev stuff in it. Um, it. It deals with posting code really well, apparently. Yes. Uh, I don't post can, a lot of code. You can format any post with a couple of different keystroke commands before and or after the text that you're typing to keep formatting in a certain way, which is really nice for developers to pass code back and forth. Right. Um, it's really nice to just, if you're sending like three paragraphs of text, you can make it very easy to read as opposed to just like a, uh, right. a, a, a I am with three paragraphs of instant message, which isn't great. No. Um, even though I think the desktop app is pretty killer on, on the Mac. Um, well, and I think the other, the other really, really good feature, which I think kills a lot of other of these I am platforms is including chatter, which is the sense of what I have seen and what I haven't seen. So when I log in, it has and state. Yeah. So it's state. And this is something that I've been asking for chatter forever. And I, I get around it now with a, with I bookmark the last one that I've seen. And then over a week I go back to the ones that have been mentioned me and I look back over that week, but like, it's really, t I can't tell when I log into a chatter to tell what I've seen or not seen. So I kind of have to go back until I recognize something versus slack which is like no it knows what you've seen and then it'll only show it'll say you haven't seen this stuff and you can just scroll up to where it says you haven't seen anymore and stop so that's where channels get even more powerful it's because like i don't need to look at every channel every day looking to see if the stuff is in there right so i can go in and and, and a they, they they light up if there's new stuff in there but if there's been a lot you just scroll up to where it started and you just kind of scroll down so like to keep up with slack a because it doesn't send you emails which is good and B, it does allow read state and starring, which eh, bookmarks and chatter. There's, there's a couple of, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned starring because there's a couple of things that it does that are pretty awesome in terms of uh, capture and like GTD and stuff like that. Let's where we'll, hear it. We'll sort of bring it there. So there is starring. So if someone sort of sends you something that you need to capture as a task, you can star it right. and sort of remind yourself to go back and look at all your starred messages yep. across every single 
channel, private conversation, direct message, whatever. Yep. It, it's all there. And each individual message has its own link. So you can actually capture the individual message and its URL because it's also a web client. Right. And you can capture the fact that, okay, I need to take action on this thing that someone asked me to do. You can click on right the 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 time. If you click on the time, it'll open it in the web. And then you can just copy that URL and capture it and say, okay, I'll get back to this tomorrow. Right. right. And you know exactly where you need to get back to and what the person was asking you. So in terms of like, I know it's not great. And we, we at Arcus often have said, you know, it's not great to ask someone to do something mission critical over in, in a chat message. Right. Well, Slack makes that a little bit easier because you can capture it in a way that you couldn't do that with like a Hangout or an instant message right or an iMessage or whatever you you can star these you can you have the links you can get back to them and you can always it, capture it it that, definitely that takes way. it like another step up right so with with chatter you can bookmark that's kind of like your thing you can bookmark it or not bookmark it those also have earls they also have earls individual um, chatter messages yep um so I, I think that's that's a great feature of it um you know, I th so going into some of the you know the things that I think it's it's very good at. It's still a sort of a timeline of stuff, though. So it is not a whereas email, everything is kind of you know an email is an email, and yes, you have a threaded email, but they're all separate. And in 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 Slack, it it is still a timeline. You're going into a channel, and it's a timeline of what happened in that channel. Right. Um, so things that are kind of above anything above the fold is kind of gone. Like Yes, it's searchable. They do have good search. They say they have great search. I've tried the search. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. It has some. It has a couple filters. Like you can filter on time. You know whether it has something or not. But I have had people put stuff into Slack that I sort of consider more of like this needs to be get needs to be gotten to in the future, and I don't want it in Slack because I because there's still when you're looking for something there's search, but then there's also the ability to kind of like drill. And I think there's two types of getting to data. I can search for data, which is sometimes works, but there's also, I don't know, so I'm going to go documents, marketing, Dreamforce 215. Oh, there's 20 documents on Dreamforce 215, and they're all different types of documents. And I can reference them all and talk about them all and look at them all. Like there's still that concept of directories and folders and kind of categorization of stuff that's sort of structured is still still the king for finding stuff for fi for getting to and also i can say to someone hey go look at the dreamforce 15 and take everything in there versus go search dreamforce 15 on whatever and find things so i think that's one of the things i don't i think they want it to be more of a repository i'm not convinced that it is a repository i think it's a great place to point people to things and hey, communicate i'm not so sure it's great at, at um at repository as being a repository um the other thing is, yeah, we start talking about the integrations. Yeah. So it's it's very very highly integratable, like through APIs. <laughs> highly integratable. Well, you have all these things, and I went and looked at the the list today of all these other systems that you can connect up to it. Everything from you know from source code repositories to which we have to social to other kind of additives that do fun things like Giphy. Like there's all sorts of integrations. Like we have ten. I was surprised at how many we had. Um, <laughs> um, but there's all sorts of integration. So it's kind of not only you know. I think if we're in the Salesforce world, we'd say it's a platform. It's not really a platform, but it has a lot of integration that can do extra stuff that maybe Slack wasn't going to build in and talk to other platforms, which I think gives it kind of a a really cool kind of. This could be. It, it could go very far. Um, it could have a lot, a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, I don't know if any I mean, the social one's nice. The social one's good because you know, you, you know, it just posts everything that Arcus does in there, right. as well as a couple of other blogs, like I mentioned. Um, we have our source code repository posting in there every time something goes on. Um, we have our ticketing system post in there. Um, we have a proof of concept that actually will post 
pretty much any event that occurs in Salesforce can be posted into Slack into a channel. So if a new case was created, that could get posted into a channel. Or if a opportunity were to close, that could get posted into a channel. Uh, pretty much any sort of event like that um, could get posted into a Slack yep. channel. Uh, one of our one of our uh, Arkies built that out as like a little playtime proof yep. of concept. It does really well with sharing like photos, like just drag and drop. Yeah, dragging and dropping images, photos, the Giphy. We love the Giphy. Giphy is a way you can do a tag, sort of like a, I don't know what you, it's a command. It's a command. Command. It's like a command line command, and then it'll throw like Type a random a word, GIF. word, and then it'll throw a, <laughs> a random funny a GIF. A random, sometimes funny, sometimes weird, sometimes whatever right. uh, animated GIF at you, and... Uh, they do have a rating scale for like your tolerance for Giphy. Ours is like at the very low, Ours low G, end. Yeah. yeah, it's like at the G level. Good. Um, it, it could be at the R level, but <laughs> it's not. Um, it, it's at the very low end of of the spectrum, which limits the number of Giphys. If you think about it, that could potentially come back for something. But we're okay with that. Yes. Well, as an organization, I think that's a better thing. Yeah. I mean, if you're um, playing around with this with your friends, you should totally go Giphy R. R-rated. <laughs> but, but if you're, you're trying to convince your boss to, to use this, don't don't go, go Giphy go, R. Probably yes. Maybe stay away from Giphy a little bit. Um, it does have uh, it has mentions. So it you does. can mention people and you, you can, can also mention channels and, and you stuff. can mention channels. So again, it has all that kind of like what you would expect in all that sort of feed Twitterization. It doesn't of everything. have hashtags. No, because hashtags are channels. There, there already exists. But if you, I don't know, I, I feel like it, I want to, I want to hash words. Yes. I, well, I mean, I do it and it just doesn't do anything, it doesn't do anything. but it's like, I'm still doing it. <laughs> yeah. It, um, it also has a neat thing called reactions. Yes. So reactions are cool. So it's it's basically I'm just trying I'm pushing everything towards chatter just so we can keep things like so. You, so it's like having the like button in chatter. Right. But there's tons of them. They're just and emoticons. They're, and they're emoticons. And you can do a lot of them. So you can put like so you, you'll see someone post something fun and then there'll be like a hundred little reactions and there'll be a hundred and a plus sign and a little thumbs up a football and, then you, and, and a, a shrimp football and a shrimp and a slice of pizza and a crab. Because you know, they reacted crab to that post. Correct. Um, it does have so that's fun. Like it definitely has that as a kind of a a, a fun piece to it. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff. You that, can uh, pin stuff. So if you have found something like yeah, I've again, never like tried that. If you like find something that's like up in the chain, yes, you can sort of pin it, and it'll sort of re repost it back down. In so like if you've said something already, and then someone joins a little later. Ah, uh, like pin that thing down. So back it just down, so pins it to, to repeat it. Okay, so it's not quite like pinning it to the top of the channel because there is a, there is no sort top. Of pins it to the bottom, I guess. Well, it puts it, it kind of reposts it. It reposts it. Yeah. Right. Um, but it also has a designation as a pin, which then you can look at all the things that are pinned. So it's kind of like a notification, like a sort announcement, of an announcement, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's a little weird. Um, you can create snippets, which are big, long, like. If you needed to post something that was more than whatever the character limit on this thing is, right. um, which is pretty high, you can create a snippet and post that. Um, you can do some interesting things with uh, Google Docs as well. And um, this is the thing that I don't get. What does that? What does that do for me? Um, what exactly are I, I don't the know the Google Docs thing? Well, are are you talking about like the commenting on them? No, I just don't understand it. Like you can share a file, share a well, Google yeah, Doc. Just, well, I mean, it's an easy way to just here I'm in this doc. So come here well, and just meet posting me. a link though. That's all. all. Yeah. So that's, that's one a thing. link to anything on the planet. Sure. Okay. But at the same time, it also um will give you a little bit of a you can start commenting on the doc itself from inside of Slack, but you're not commenting on the doc. You're commenting on like, like say you opened it, yes. you looked at it, and then you wanted to give someone some commentary on it. You can do it in Slack instead of in the doc. Maybe if it was like supposed to be kept between the two of you or something like that in a private direct conversation okay. as opposed to like okay. a public comment inside of like a shared google doc okay 
all right, so that's I kind of get that. I just don't get what the integration does. It doesn't. It doesn't bring the doc in. You can't see it or it's preview it in there. It's not really. In well, there is. No, no, no. There is an integration. integration. There is a. It's one of the integrations of. I feel like that's like a pre. Pre one. I mean, like, it just tells like you that it's. That. I, I think the thing that it does is it kind of it shows you that it's a a spreadsheet from Google Drive as opposed to just a link. It gives you a little bit more context just to it. Just a little, but it's not. I kind of was waiting for it to give me like a preview no, or the something Hangouts useful. integration is a little more interesting because you can like start a Hangout inside of a Slack channel. Right. And then like have a video feed thing right. going on. Well, that's what sort of things I think it's missing. It's missing video. Um, it doesn't have native video, which I've kind of, I know that's a tough thing to crack, so I totally understand why it doesn't. Um, it does have awareness, so like you can see who's online and who's not. Um, it does have, you do have sort of, you can set yourself to not be around, like so you can have the app on and you can set yourself, but you don't have the, sort of the, those statuses. So you can't say at lunch or, right. you know, uh, in a meeting, right? So you're kind of always there. Um, unless you're, you're, you're either not. away or you're there. Right. right. But I mean, it's not like you can't say, like, you can't leave a status for yourself. Like, other I am right. engines out to lunch for the last whatever. 20 years, maybe longer, have said, yeah, you have to put a different status. I'm listening to music. I'm you doing know what, hard work. Those are kind of like out of favor. Well, I, I, I totally understand. I'm just trying to give people some sort of sense of what it is and is not. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. So, so, on. So what do you think? I mean, you obviously you're a big fan. I am. I mean, we we were. I was part of the, I was the pilot. The pilot here at Arcus. Uh, the Arcus pilot. Yeah, that lasted probably about two or three months That's without right. anybody else on it. I mean, it wasn't just me. It was me and a group of four other people uh, that were that were piloting it. And uh, I think Dreamforce was kind of the impetus for us to get everyone on it. I think what we've done in terms of keeping the lines of like what belongs in slack versus what doesn't we've written um this is for folks who now want to you know go out and do this at their company we've written documentation around like what it is what it's used for how to use it just like you would for any other system you are Hopefully. rolling out <laughs> this is the guidelines that you right. should follow Hopefully. for this this is a real communication tool at your company that you should treat as such and these are the things that we're going to use it for and these are the things we're not going to use it for right um we've in it we're google users we're google apps users we use gmail and google drive and all that so we've leveraged uh google's authentication to uh authenticate into slack which is great because it just inherits the two-factor from google although they have their own two-factor as well just rolled it out so you have to pay for that, but that's where you get into the pay stuff, right? Um, and you get more. Well, you, well the single sign in you have to do. You have to be a sing, You have to get. You have to be a pay member to get the single sign. That's in right. Google, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so we've done some of those things. I, I mean, there's there's been a lot of actually. I've seen a bunch of conversations lately around uh, comparing like Slack to Chatter, and I don't even think they're in the same. I don't even know how you compare the two things. They're they're really different. One is very instant communication in groups or one to one, and the other is very much just it's not instantaneous. It's more contextual in terms of like a business. Like I'm talking about this record because mm -hmm. that's how I think about chatter. I think like. Well, we have groups. We have an all yeah, Arcus group. group. Sure, but hey, listen, you posted something this morning, and I wondered why'd you post it there. Well, that's weird. No, because you po no, you posted to Chatter, and I right. was like, "Wow, I, I, I feel like in the way." And I think that's one of the things that when you're this is the advice piece of this podcast. If you can turn it off at this point, when you're thinking about Slack, think about what is its use case. For us, it was simple. We had Hangouts, and we replaced Hangouts with this. Now it has all this other stuff that we like about it, but basically it was we went from instant communication on this that people are on and we can communicate and ping people and collaborate with from this one over to this one. And so it was a very simple one, two. We didn't say we're going to now schedule our meetings through Slack and we're going to do our opportunities through Slack and we're going to do project management through Slack. No, it's like here we go from this to this. Now it has all this other stuff, 
But it is still kind of an interesting point of when, when, like I even now I think, okay, well, chatter versus, you know, chatter versus, um, uh, you know, Slack. Part of it is I think the contextual piece is right. So when you posted to all Arcus. What you, did I post? I don't know. You posted something this morning. But the point was, I it didn't wasn't, post anything this morning. Well, I'm actually it? looking, uh, looking for like what you're actually talking about. Yeah, maybe it was this morning. It's another day. I don't know. It was either today or yesterday. Okay. It was something you found or did, or it was something about lightning. Oh yeah, I yeah. demoed lightning to a client yesterday. Yeah, and you posted it in all Arcus. I was kind of yeah, like, yeah, I, I wanted them the... to be in Salesforce because it was kind of about Salesforce. We actually don't have like a Salesforce channel in Slack. Well, it's ridiculous because we have Salesforce. Right. But I, I would, you know, we have a, we have a questions, <laughs> but we don't have like a Salesforce. So it's, how would we post a Salesforce channel I, in Slack? That's why I posted this thing yeah. was about Salesforce. So I posted it in right. Salesforce. I, right. So I just, anyway, again, I thought it was just kind of one of those. And that's where I think that it can go bad. So Slack, just like any tool can, can be, a, it can be overused. It can be you could sit in all day and just ping people and po- post into into Slack and not get work done. I think it's just like any tool, and I know I talk a lot about email. It's just another tool, and so there's going to be blog posts about Slack killed my productivity and Slack is terrible. It's going to come. It will come within a time, just like email is killing people's productivity. And it's like it's a tool. You have to figure out how you use that tool, what the best cases are, and how you manage it. And as an organization, how you're going to use it. And I think that's the important thing. It's like, because any tool, it doesn't matter if it's Hangout, Skype, whatever, can have a downside to it, right? We consider this internal, real-time collaboration. That's what we use it for. That's what it's good for. It's, uh, and, you know, there's a, and I think we add in maybe there's a fun level to it. There's a little bit of lightheartedness to it. Like, that is that is kind of attractive. You, it has the giffies and it has the reactions and it has stuff that kind of makes you go oh you know that's kind of fun so that is that is slack anything else on your list of of cool slacky things anything on the not so great anything you don't like about it no nothing satisfied i'm very satisfied um (laughs) you're easily satisfied no i think it's great Um, well the other thing is i don't know how it would work in in an organization that was massive like we're not a massive organization so you know, th- the lighting up of channels and the lighting up of things and being mentioned. I mean, I could see this being just as terrible as any other organizational thing where everybody, I also feel like this is too new to kind of like put all your eggs in this basket. I like, I like to remind people here at Arcus that if Slack were to go away tomorrow, we could go on with our business. Whereas if Google Docs went away tomorrow, we'd be in trouble. If Salesforce went away tomorrow, we'd be in trouble. If Slack went away tomorrow, yeah, I'd be bummed. Like, ah, oh, well, there's a tool we lost, but that's okay, because I don't, I don't know necessarily. I trust the lifespan. I think it's, I think someone's gonna buy it. I mean, it just it feels like it's setting up to be bought. It doesn't feel like a company that wants to be Slack forever. It looks like who's gonna buy it? Is it Google? Is it Apple? I don't know. I saw Google? something that said Apple could buy like twenty yeah. some odd companies and still have like. 30 billion dollars thankfully apple doesn't want to be in the instant messaging world or the online collaboration world but i could see I'm trying to think of like a big competitor to like google um not uh, none of those guys but I, I could see someone like oracle coming in and buying it and just being right mm. um mm. it does have some regular stuff around it does do archiving things i don't think it's it does statistics i was looking at that day to see like who's using it and why so it's it does it's been really well thought out um, it is just, it is not an email killer. It is a nice collaboration tool with some things that, yes, if you used it for those pieces, then they would cut down on the emails. Um, you know, we have a private channel that we can use, or you, you have a private team channel you could use, or whatever. I could see that cutting down the amount of emails. But it's the, the thing that cuts it from being email is it's not universal. I can't go and Slack anybody. Slack you, Slack this. Like, it's hey, just it's, it's Slack, just in time. Slack you. Slack on. Um, all right. So that's sort of the biggest pick of the week we've ever done. But I thought it'd be interesting kind of as a, you know, I'll tell you, the way we're doing it is chatter is very specific to things that are in Salesforce. So if you're referencing something that's in Salesforce, don't put it in Slack because that doesn't make sense. Put it in chatter. Right. right. If it's opportunities, if it's leads, if it's projects, put it in, put it in Salesforce. 
because it's more part of that record and more part of I have the context of what is. If it's instant communication, pinging, hey, sharing, collaborating, that's a great Slack usage. So let's give some pricing just I did it. already, but you can do again. You did the pricing yeah, I did. I said I gave him the numbers. You gave the, all the numbers? Yep. I really did. Okay. I wasn't listening. Free, zero, I... standard 670, 667 a month, plus 1250 a month per user per month, per user per person. If you're being billed annually. If you're billing annually. So it's 8 bucks 15 By the way, there's something in here. Um, I think we have standard. I think um, we do. Yes, we are standard. Guest access is a feature. I don't know what that means. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, it is web-based. It is also, I would say, I don't know what the security around Slack is. So to one of the first things I said is this is not a place you share stuff that you basically don't want on the web. Like, because it is, to me, while well, they, they've already been hacked. We know that. They were hacked They were hacked six months ago, and they got everybody's username and password. So to me, they're kind of very questionable. Like, Salesforce is not questionable when it comes to security. Google is, like, pretty good. Slack is like I, you're you're young in the game. So if I, if you're using this, is for collaboration. That if someone hacked it and got in and looked at all the giffies I sent you yesterday, fine. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not sharing anything else. We don't put other stuff in there that you wouldn't want to share. So just just some thoughts. Um, well, why don't you make your pick of the week? <laughs> well, I think it's pretty <laughs> evident. I'm surprised. I'm go... It's funny. You should have picked the one I'm picking, and I should have picked because you like that one better than the You're other right. one. But... but I'll go. I'll go. Well, you want to switch? All right, let's switch. I'm switching. All right. Um, I'll pick Slack for OS 10. Wait, that's my pick. No, nope, that's my pick. Okay. I'll pick Slack for OS X. So I love the desktop application. I think it's killer. I when we were talking about it, and you're like, "Why is this so great? Why are we going to use this?" and da 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 da. I was like, man, the desktop app is just so killer. Like, it's such a great messaging platform. There's so many little shortcuts just to get in and out of different conversations that, I mean, I use, you know, Command T constantly to, like, move between channels and stuff. Uh, there's just, like, great little shortcuts and things. To, didn't, didn't even, even know, know that. that. So, you know, it's just a great way to... It's just a much better app than I've ever used for instant messenger before. Yes, I, it's it. No, it's, it's the, just a it's, killer. App. It's the best instant messenger I've ever used. That's like, like hands down. Yeah, it wins over anything I've ever used. So and then there's see, all the other stuff, right? So I think that's where if I were to pitch it, I'd pitch it as, "Hey, we let's get the greatest instant messenger out there." and just go from there. Right. I would try to stay away from everything else. And then you can use it, like we said, everywhere. Right. The web, on the desktop, like I just picked, and then... Right, my pick, this is the worst episode ever because we're picking basically the product three times over, but um, the iOS version, and there's both an i... It's it's universal, um, but it has a... And I'll tell you, I'll, here's how you can tell I'm all in. It's on the first page of your iPad, not even in a folder. Not that. That's right. It's on the first page, and, and it's here. not even on a folder. And then on your phone, it is on the first page. Well, same location. In the same location. That's not in a folder. That's that's something that tells you me. And it's in a corner. What's in the? It's in, it's the, in a corner. It's in the corner. So that's where it, that's where it's kind of gotten to. Where is it on my phone? Now oh, my phone's in the other room. iOS. So it's for the iOS. Uh, I'm. Uh, Mac and and iPad. I will say they. This is not the first place they go with their development dollars, because uh, I f I found more bugs in the iOS version. Yeah, there's some bugs in there. It also is not quite so like real time, right? So like when you load the app, the messages themselves load when you load the app, right? As opposed to sort of preloading in the background, right? It's a little. I think Hangouts does that a little bit better. Right. Uh, yeah, I haven't really noticed. I mean, I noticed I can get notifications. I know I get notifications when I'm unmentioned. I like that you can control it per device. So if I want my iPad to never get notifications, I want my iPhone 2, I can do that. Um, the app for the iOS is really good. It, it, and it, and it, I mean, other than just, it just feels exactly like, you know, it feels like the desktop. The desktop is, is the killer app. We don't even use, is there a web web version? Oh, yeah. But we don't use that. 
Um, no. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes I'll use it because I'll be click. I'll click on a message. Okay, and get to and the it web, just web lands version. In the web version, and then I'll like I'll capture that URL. Yeah. Both are free, of course, but you know, with the, that, you might need the actual underlying. Um, you need a team to join. You need a team to join. Again, I it is it is very good. I'd love to see how it scales a little bit. I'd love to know more about how they handle compliance. They just done two factor, so you know that's a big thing. But again, if you're using Google Sign On, you're using the Google Sign On two factor. Um, it if is you, if you have two factor on your Google, which you should. No one should have it and not have two factor on anything. Um, really, really good. And I will say, I've even tested their customer service. I've tested their customers, and it's pretty good. They they're responsive. They're putting in a case is easy. You don't have to fill like a hundred things. They get back to you. And you can see your you can see your cases inside Slack, so it shows you how very many nice. open cases. So it kind of makes it very like in your face. So like you know the systems that you go in and you put in a case and you don't know where you have cases. Can this we is go on like, a rant for like a moment? Sure. Well, that's next week. Salesforce has made it incredibly difficult. Look at the thing for next week. What is, I closed the document already. <laughs> You're they so- made it incredibly difficult to open a case. Next week on Cloud Focus Weekly, customer service revisit. Well, this was just like a little bit of a preamble then. All right. Because don't get ready because we are unleashing next week. We are unleashing next get, week. Get ready. NGO. No. What? Oh. Wear what? your big boy clothes. Next. We might not be able to do one next week. Why? Scheduling with, with my... <laughs> He's pointing to his shoulder. I'm pointing to my mouth. Oh. All right. Well, we'll f- oh, that'd be so good to get you right after the surgery. I'm very loopy. Uh, yeah, yeah, very very loopy. Yeah. That might be our explicit podcast. Oh, boy. Or I just make fun of you and you don't even know it. And then you have to listen to the podcast to know how much I made fun of you. <laughs> All things that could happen. All things that could happen. All right. We'll be back next week uh, or not. Follow at Just Elstein. Follow at Jason Matwood. Follow at Arcasync. Facebook.com slash Arcasync. Success Community Group. Power Bus Hub. We're in the booth. LinkedIn, Google Plus, subscribe and review, iTunes and Stitcher for Justin and Jason, both slacking off, saying enjoy those cloudy days.